Hello everyone! The European Girls Math Olympiad 2023 was just held last month in Slovenia. Over here we see a beautiful picture of Slovenia. And at the bottom we see a photo of an LED performance which the contestants got to enjoy as part of the closing ceremony. So let's take a look at one of the problems from the Olympiad, which is problem 3 in this case. So for problem 3 we have a combinatorics problem. The problem is as follows. Let k be a positive integer. So let's say k equals 3 for our illustration here. Let c has a dictionary d consisting of some k letter strings consist containing only the letters a and b. So for example, d could look like this. Lexi would like to write either the letter A or B in each cell of a k by k grid so that each column contains a string from D when read from top to bottom and each row also contains a letter from D when read from left to right. Now obviously if D there's very little options in D it might not be possible. If there's a lot of options in D then maybe it's very easy to fill up such uh, the grid in such a way. So the question is, what is the smallest integer m such that if d contains at least m different strings, then Lexi can fill her grid in this manner, no matter what strings are in d. So as usual, I would like to approach, uh, talk about how, how I approach this problem from uh, the beginning uh, through some motivational uh, exploration uh, section so that we can easily motivate how we reach the solution. So usually when we face with this kind of problem, well, the first thing to try is small cases to get a better understanding of the problem. So when k equals 1, I mean the answer is evidently 1 because you only have 1 square as long as your dictionary has something, either a or b, you can just take the letter and fill up the grid, right? So uh, the answer, the minimum m required is just 1, so that's not very interesting. Now k equals 2 gives slightly a bit more insight. So in this case, we have four options, a, b, b, a, uh, a, a, and b, b. And let's see, if a, a is in the dictionary, then we are pretty much done because you can just write the whole grid with a's. And, uh, and similarly, if b, b is in the dictionary, then we can just use b's for the entire grid and there won't be an issue. So if we want to make our life difficult, we shouldn't be having the all A's or A, all B's in the uh, dictionary. Now the question is, is A, B or B, A by itself in the dictionary sufficient for us to fill the grid? Well, the answer is no, right? If we only have A, B, let's say, so we are forced to use A, B here, then nothing starts with B and we will not be able to fill up the, the second column. So A, B or B, A by alone is insufficient. So then the question becomes, is D equals A, B, B, A enough? Yes, because you can then uh, basically just fill A, B, A, uh, A, B, A, B, B, A, and B, A, right? So in this case, it turns out that the answer is equals to 2 uh, simply because if A, A, or B, B is in the dictionary, you're done. And if not, then uh, having at least two entries in the dictionary forces the dictionary to be A, B, and B, A, which we just argued is enough for us to fill the grid as well. So now the key, one of the key observations here is, um, uh, the key observations for k equals two may will become clearer once we look at k, k equals three. Now, so similar to the k equals two case, right? The thing is, um, if we have all a's or all b's in the dictionary, we are we are already immediately done. So to make our life difficult, let's ignore. Let's say we don't have such luxury. Okay. Now the thing is, if your dictionary has only all the A hits, except uh, AAA, then you are also stuck. Because if you have all the A hits, then one of these must be at least a B. But because you don't have a B start, we will not be able to fill out that column with anything. Because there's nothing that starts with B given to you, right? So this is similar to the K equals 2 case, where you have AB, but then you don't have BA, then you're stuck. So it turns out that that means D a size of uh, 3 for the dictionary is not enough because you can get all the A hits except the triple A's, then you are stuck, right? There's no B hits for you to work with. So then the question is, how about is D equals 4 enough? Because that will force you to at least have a B hit as well as at least have an A hit, right? So let's just uh, try out a special case and see what happens, whether we get any additional insight. So let's say you have a B hit given to us, BBA, and we still have all the A hits. So let's say D in this case is this. then are we able to fill up the grid in this very particular special case? 
Well, so since we got a B head and definitely we need to use it somewhere, let's, let's just put the B head down. And then we see that with the only B head we got, the Bs here must be using the B heads, right? So we can very quickly, uh, fill up the grid. It's not too difficult. And then we get this, uh, possible configuration. And we realize that what we use, uh, from the A part is the AAB, right? And it turns out, if you look very carefully, AAB is actually sort of the complement of BBA, right? Where if you flip B to A's and A to B's, you will move from BBA to AAB, right? So this is where the inspiration comes in. They're like, oh, the reason why D equals four might be enough is because you might always end up with a pair of complements and that might help. Specifically, if we look at the all eight possible combinations of uh, words, well, if we get A, A or B, 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 we are done. So let's ignore uh, getting those uh, words. Then the remaining six words can be put into pairs and having at least four words in your dictionary will guarantee you at least getting a pair of complements in your dictionary. So this is the juncture where you realize, oh, you have actually probably solved the problem. So let's take a look at the general solution. So firstly, we can argue that two to the K minus one minus one is not sufficient. And that's because you could, for example, get all the A hits except the all A's, right? So as we argue, then uh, those A hits will have a letter B somewhere. So once you fill the first row, your, your B's, without having a B hit, you'll not be able to fill up uh, those columns that starts with B. So in this case, you're stuck. Now, on the other hand, we are going to now show that 2 to the K minus 1 is sufficient for you to always win. So, and the idea is, if you get all A's or all B's, you instantly win. So, let's make our life difficult. In a worst case scenario, we don't have this. Then, the remaining words can be put into 2 to the K minus 1 minus 1 pairs of complements. So, by pigeonhole, there must at least a pair of complements. So let's say the complements, let's name the string uh, S, A, and S, B for the string that starts with A and the string that starts with B. Then in your grid, let's just put the first row using S, A. And then now, if your uh, column starts with A, you fill downwards with S, A. If your column starts with B, you fill downwards with S, B. And so all the columns by construction are from the dictionary because they're either S, A or S, B. So the thing to check is that each row must be SA or SB, which will then conclude the proof. So this is where I will leave it as an exercise to the reader to uh, check. It's not too difficult, but it can be done through some tedious uh, case checking. So by considering like, for example, uh, you just need to check row I column J, right? That it fits the description of SA or SB. Uh, and you can do this by checking if the column starts with A or B, and if your row st starts with A or B, and then uh, match up the, the four scenarios. So I'll leave this as an exercise to the viewer, but the key idea is identifying the pair of complements, and hopefully you found this problem manageable with the motivational and exploration section that we have at the front. So that's all we'll cover in this video. If you enjoyed this video, check out the uh, China Girl Math Olympiad problem as well. Uh, stay tuned to the channel for more math videos, and see you soon.